Ladies and gentlemen, the day has finally arrived. I am reacting to Epica for the very first time. And so many of you Nightwish and Sabaton fans alike have recommended Epica to me. So I hope I picked a good first song to react to with Storm the Sorrow here. Uh, I got so many song recommendations, so I hope this is a good choice, guys. Um, but I'm excited to get into it because I love Nightwish and Sabaton. They both have such unique sounds energies they're fun they're dark they're talented uh and i you know i expect nothing less uh from epica here so again i'm excited to get into it i hope you are as well if you're new to the channel and enjoy my reaction hit that subscribe button but yeah let's just get into this i feel like i'm in some kind of cathedral or something. Ooh. Nice voice. Bright, bright blue eyes. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm sorry, that. What, what was that? That was such a switch up. Is that like a mini breakdown? I, I want to listen to that again. Whoa. That is so interesting. It's like we took the song and we dipped it into like a murky, muddy swamp for just, you know, like that five, ten seconds there in this dissonance, in this darkness. And then we just brought it up with the siren soaring, clear, beautiful voice. The drums kick in, the guitars kip, kick in, chugging us back along. I don't know. It's like we just like walked into a, a mud pile for a little bit and then just went about our way. Really interesting. I've never heard something like that, to be honest. And then we're right back into it. Oh, I see. It's part of the verse. It's not a breakdown. It's so unique. Oh my gosh, I have so many, so many thoughts, but my very first thought that I just have to bring up is these note choices are so unique to me. They're not very obvious, you know, and I live in the realm of like, you know, Western music and scales, uh, sometimes like Egyptian and Indian kind of scales, but minor, you know, natural minor, harmonic minor, Phrygian, those kind of things are things that I'm aware of and know of pretty well so I know roughly speaking where the notes are going to be even if I don't know which note it's going to be I can have a rough sense with this song with the verse we heard with the chorus we heard there are notes there that I just don't anticipate at all and as a as a listener for the first time it's kind of like mind bending to me because I don't know where I need to land in the sonic scape and you know the example I'll use is if you've ever played doodle jump on your phone uh, 
you know, there's platforms. So you have your little doodle guy and he's jumping up and down trying to get higher and higher and higher. But when you're falling, it's kind of a scary moment because you don't want to lose the game. So you have to find the nearest and closest platform. And as I'm listening to the song, trying to like catch those notes that are you know represented by the platforms in the game, uh, I feel like I'm falling, trying to land on a on a platform by predicting what the platform or where it's going to be. And I'm failing to do it every time. So I guess listening to Epica is like being a bad doodle jump player. Uh, that's my analysis for you guys. Oh, beautiful piano run. This song is so dark and poetic and I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying like trying to like decipher every single lyric here but definitely the thing that comes to my mind is dissuading sorrow through recognizing that a lot of our needs are fed from ego and don't need to be there our needs are oftentimes misplaced and we need or want certain things that actually won't give us fulfillment. And because we're chasing something that doesn't actually give us fulfillment, and of course we do it unknowingly, uh, we end up finding sorrow because a road that doesn't lead to higher self-actualization or attainment will inevitably lead you to sorrow or hell, depending on how uh, dark or religious you want to go with the uh, analysis there. So in terms of the meaning of the song, it's a very poetic song, very beautiful. Again, these notes keep taking me, <laughs> taking me by surprise. I really like it. And the last thing I'll say, which is random, is doesn't she, the singer here, kind of look like Adele? Uh, that's not meant as an insult or something. I just don't know why. When I see her face and her eyes, I'm, I'm just reminded of Adele. Let's keep going. That's a dark chord. Oh! Oh my god! Where does this. <laughs> Where did that come from? So pretty. In the memories you will find somehow. used to be a dream on end. No more need to be alone. 
Oh. Ooh, these strings. <sighs> Epica. <laughs> Epica, Epica, Epica. Ah, so interesting. They definitely live up to their name, Epica. That was an epic song, an epic performance. I have really so many scattered thoughts right now. And I'm just trying to reconcile all of these like things and deliver them to you in the best order. The first thing that just immediately comes to mind is in the end, I, I'm being, uh, I guess I keep hearing that someone has betrayed her, betrayed these tears. So in this song, it doesn't appear to me as somebody else is hurting the individual her. It seems like she's almost positioning herself against herself and saying, I'm actually the one causing these tears. I am betraying myself. I'm betraying these tears. Um, maybe that's a, a bit of a stretch. Let me know what you think about the uh, about that interpretation there. But again, I'll feed it into my grander narrative of trying to self-actualize, trying to dissuade the ego. I love that line about, uh, I guess, demonizing need that we reel in. That to me was like my favorite line of the song there because it's true. Is it a need really? We should question a lot of the assumptions. And I think oftentimes people struggle and I, I just noticed this, uh, whether it's friends or you know acquaintances and definitely people that are outside of my purview, but I'll notice that people are not really operating from a place of, what is the word? Maybe it's coming to your mind right now. From true agency, there may be operating on autopilot. And that's really sad because when you go about things in your life, you should be doing those things mindfully. And even if they do become second nature, you arrived at those behaviors, at those decisions, at those frameworks in a mindful way originally, right? So there's no, I don't know. I think a lot of people lack this, this level of, self-realization there's a better word either way we should be checking a lot of our inherent assumptions because there's no telling what things went right in our upbringing and childhood and life that led us up to believe what we believe and some of those things are going to be right absolutely but some of those things are going to steer us in the diametrically opposite direction and having the humility, having the willingness, the openness to explore all of the annals of your own mind will give you the ability to dissuade any semblance uh, of sorrow. At least even if you do feel sorrow, which is a, it's an okay feeling to feel, you'll recognize where that comes from and in the long run potentially mitigate uh, either new future sources of sorrow or the pre-existing sorrow that you feel by just allowing your body to inhabit the world freely and without attachment. Uh, yeah, that's my <laughs> pseudo intellectual take for the day, but I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. If you did hit that subscribe button and have a great rest of your day. Take care and peace.